Burkina Faso, Mali, Niger, they have made a very strong move toward the Western power, particularly France. This left us only with one question in mind. For how long will France have to keep holding in order for them to take back the leadership of these countries that we found in Africa? Can France survive without these three countries? Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso. Because these three countries, they have made a very strong, powerful move toward France leadership. Well, that's what we'll be discussing in this video. But before that, allow me to welcome you all. Welcome to Cool Buzz. Welcome back to another episode. This is what we do here. And this is the first day that we decided to come and sit down with you and have these deep conversations about what is happening in Africa, particularly in these African countries that I just mentioned, which is Burkina Faso, Mali, and Niger. And what kind of move did these three countries took in order for them to defend themselves and their sovereignty? against the worst power but guys before we get continue do me a favor you see in the comment section tell us your country tell us where you are watching us from your country so that uh, all our members we can get familiar and we can have an idea uh, which part of the planet are you watching us from because it's very important and uh, feel free to also uh, engage in the conversation if you have questions you know today is a relaxed mode we just want to have a, this open uh, conversation for everyone and give also your opinions about what we are going to discuss in this video without a delay let us get in it now because it's very important that we get to understand exactly what did france really want to have to do with africans what is france looking in africa because it is our duty to make sure that uh, africa continent is well protected africa continent is at peace so in order for us to do that we need to look after each other we need to look each other's back so that the enemy should not include that and uh, just surprise us with whatever they are planning on africa people guys we see this week which was yesterday obviously the president or should i say the uh, niger military coup leader who had to travel all the way to burkina faso to go and see um ibrahim tori and he went there they had to discuss a couple of things but we need to understand exactly why he had to go and see Ibrahim Torre because before this uh, Niger military uh, coup leader went to Burkina Faso, Burkina Faso and Mali, who've been working now hand to hand, who have been partners since for a uh, couple of times now since the, the, this uh, military coup came in power, they had sent some people to Niger. To go and encourage people, uh, the new uh, military government, uh, to go and encourage them and tell them that you no, know, they have the support of these countries. And now this time, the Niger military coup leader had to travel to go and see Ibrahim Toure because he had something to talk with, with him, because they had some plans which they they've been trying to 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 see on how they can try to continue defeating uh, France. France is the country which had threatened this military uh, coup leader that they should not stay in power. Instead, they should give power back to the president who's under the house arrest. And France, we all know that he even threatened them saying that if they don't do so, then they'll left France without no choice but to invade um, Niger. And after they done all, after they had said all these things, we saw how France um, keep on trying to stand, uh, putting a lot of sanctions, you know, and influencing such African movement as uh, Akoa and um, uh, African Union leaders, so that they should not recognize this military coup as the as the leader in that country. That's what France did, but. This Niger government, military government, they stood together and they were like, Fusek, we don't want anything to do with France. 
since France have the courage to come and interfere in our sovereignty, well, we are going to show them who we are. We are going to show them that we are a sovereign country. And that is how Niger had to sanction also back on France. They reject France out of the country. They tell France that France should pull up all their troops and they should leave Niger. At first, France they did not accept it because they could not take it easy. You know what they did? They tried to resist, but at the end of the day, they gave up. When they gave up, they had all one language, one message which they were having in their mouth. I remember President of France, uh, President Emmanuel Macron, when he said these words. We are not involved. We should not give in to coup leaders a narrative which says that France has become our enemy. The problem of Nigerians today is coup leaders who are putting them in danger by giving up the fight against terrorism, by abandoning an economic policy which was good for the country, and who are losing all international funding which was allowing the people to lift out of poverty. Our policy is simple. We do not recognize coup leaders. We support the president who has not resigned and we are committed to standing by his side. We are here not to recognize the Niger military coup. For us, we don't recognize them, we don't know them. We are here to make sure that um, we bring the stability in this country. But as we all know by now that these people, whenever they get to interfere in Africa business, they usually come with only two words. We are here to install, I mean, to bring peace in this country and then install democracy. Because for them, they believe that they are the perfect people when it comes to democracy. They apply everything about democracy, but Africans were just their students. So them, they believe that they are, they are our teachers. For them to always come and give us lessons on how to do things in Africa. Mm -hmm. That is how West been, they've been doing all this time. So, they managed to kick France out of Niger. France would have a serious uh, influence on the Niger government before this military coup took place. They were the one who had to install the president over there. Niger people will go to the elections, but at the end of the day, the person that will be nominated as a president of that country is not, is not going to be the person that people of Niger had voted. Instead, it will be someone that the Western medias and the, the, the Western powers, France leadership, they had get to influence the entire nations and they impose whoever they will put in power because they want someone who will be there to protect their interest. This is how we know how their games usually work. And they've been doing this not only in Niger but in most of the countries. Remember France is one of that country who had uh, colonized about 33 African countries. You understand? So, now, France thought that it was going to be easy for them, as they always do every time. But this military coup, they were actually getting an idea from other African countries which had a military coup. We're talking about Burkina Faso, Mali, Chad, so on and so on. And they understood that we can do these things on our own without being influenced by somebody, without having someone seated in France or US telling us on how to do with the, the, the business of our own country. That is how you see people of Niger resisted to that point. Now that they have resisted, they throw France out. France was supposed to be uh, surviving with the uranium from Niger. That battle is going to be a long one because I can't imagine France without uranium from Niger. So they will try everything by all means in order for them to influence Niger politics so that, and politicians I mean to say, so that at the end of the day, they will have a last word to say. And that is something that uh, the Niger military government, they don't want it to happen. And in order for them to 
manage to resist against this Western power. They need to put their power together with other African countries who are having the same vision as theirs. And that is how the Niger military coup leader decided to go and visit uh, Ibrahim Taore so that they can have a deal that will, will make them stand against the West. Well, what was that deal? In order for us to get to discuss more about what was this deal, I'm inviting you first to have listen to what this meeting was all about when the Niger military coup leader had to visit Burkina Faso. Let us watch. Niger's military ruler met with his counterpart to Mali and Burkina Faso in his first international visits since seizing power in July. Niger's neighbors, which are ruled by military leaders who seized power in 2020 and 2022 respectively, have pledged solidarity to Niger's coup leaders. Chiani arrived in Burkina Faso on Thursday evening for a friendship and working visit with Captain Ibrahim Traoré. Le Burkina Faso, le Mali et le Niger ont décidé de créer Burkina Faso, Mali and Niger have decided to create an alliance of sile states. This alliance is the consecration of our determination to wrest back our sovereignty, the sovereignty of the Sahel states, so that the Sahel is no longer a zone of insecurity, but a zone of prosperity for the good of our peoples. The pair discuss issues common to both countries, in particular the fight against terrorism and socio-economic development. The three Sahel countries in September signed a pact that includes provisions for mutual defense in the event of an attack on the sovereignty and territorial integrity of any of the countries. Listening to what this Niger military coup leader had to say in his visit in Burkina Faso, it left me with a couple of questions in my mind which I would like to share with you as we try to bring through our analysis. Guys, you know, in most of the case when it comes to Africans, uh, military coup uh, leaders, whenever they, there is a, a military coup somewhere in one of their uh, African countries, you will find out that these people, once they sit in the chair, they will start working with the West. They will start working with the U.S., British, France, Germany, Belgium, or Italy. They will work with these countries because they will feel like this is a life opportunity for them. A life op opportunity that will help them to become even more richer. And why they do that? Because the worst, they will come of their influence to influence on them. So that they will give them whatsoever they want to have. And no one will put or impose sanctions against them once they are removed from their office. They will guarantee them to give them um, the security or refugee status in their countries. Mm -hmm. Look very well. In the past years, you'll see that most of African military coup leaders who have tried or had that military coup, once they, le they release power to the civilians, to the politicians, they don't stay in their country anymore. You find out that they'll abandon their mil military positions and they'll go and live somewhere in Europe. Do you know why? Because them staying in their countries, it will actually put their life at risk. It will put their life in danger because they can be killed at any time by the new leader or the new president who will be having power because for them, I mean, their presence being in, the, in those countries, it is a threat to the president of those countries. I don't know if you are following me. Let's put it in this way. You, you are a military coup leader. You took power. You put someone who's supposed to be the president of that country, you put them in under house arrest, like the way they did with uh, Omar Bongo. And then Ali Bongo, I mean. And then the next things someone else come and took power become the president now that person will be afraid of you as long as you are in the military they'll be afraid of you because they'll feel like no if i don't look after this man this man can also decide one of these days to sleep and wake up just for you to find out that no he had done again another military coup 
as he did with my preceders. So that is a very big threat that not any African leaders can take. So usually, they will either eliminate you or either they will arrest you. They just want to make you become powerless so that they will have control over you. I believe most of you, you know what I'm talking about now. And that is where this Western power, France, US, all these countries that I mentioned, they usually come in. They will come and support you with your mili military coup with everything that you need, they'll give you a chance to steal as much you want to steal. Now, when you finish, when you are done stealing, they will tell you that, no, look, now we are giving you our puppet, the person of our choice, whom we want him to replace you. And you, as for you, we are giving you protections. You can come and live in our countries. You can come and invest your money in our countries. The money that you had stolen. They will tell you that no, come and invest it in our countries. No one will follow you. No one will do this, this. They will protect, they will give you that guarantee for you to feel that, okay, I'm secured. I'm well protected. Let me go ahead and live maybe in France. That is the reason why you see a lot of military coup leaders, after a certain period of time, they are, that they, since they've been in, in power, they'll be like, no, us, we are just soldiers. We're supposed not to be here for so long. We are here, we're going to just organize a fair and transfer elections. The one will be announced as the winner. We are going to give power to him or her. And us will retire. We'll go back to our positions as the soldiers. Now, once, once they are organizing these, um, I would call, elections, since they were been, they've been already held by the Western power, the Western power will tell them whom they should announce as the winner of those elections. That is the reason why you guys, so Africa will keep on turning each and every time. You see a country that no, they were having a military coup and that brings a hope. Because if you look very well, whenever there is a military coup, you'll see that the whole country, the whole nations, they are so excited. They are so motivated. They feel so good, especially if they have been tired already of the, 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 their president, whether it's their dictatorship or whatever it is. You find out that the people, population, will be so excited, they will come and support these militaries in order for them to succeed with their coup. Now, since they have trust these people so much, which means whoever this military government will come and announce and say that this is the winner of the elections. Well, people will accept. Sometimes people might even also disagree. But by then it will be too late because the Western power had already have influence. Now, why did I give you all this example? Well, I'm giving you this example because of the move that the Niger government took. It shows that these are the true Pan-Africans who have a different way of seeing things, who have a different way of doing things around. They did not want to do the same mistake that most of these African military coup leaders usually do time to time. Yes, most of them, as I said, once they are in power, the West will come to them, they will propose them guarantee, protections, they will give them the chance to steal their minerals as much as they want, in exchange of something, in exchange for them to come and to be replaced by a puppet president who will be under control of these Western powers. Now, looking at Niger, they refuse that. After rejecting France, after chasing France out of their country, they will have decided maybe to go to China and be in good friendship with China, perhaps Russia, or maybe even one of these Western countries, whether, it's, whether it is a British or what, they will have chosen one of these European countries to be their partners. But you know what the people of Niger did? They refused that. They went to their fellow African brothers. They went to Burkina Faso. They went to Mali. You see, so they went to these countries and signed an alliance with them. Instead of going to sign with the Western power, they decided to sign this alliance with these countries because they believe that these are our, our fellow brothers, these are our African brothers, and they're never going to betray us. They're never going to step us at back. 
and they could even see the intentions which was coming from these countries as i said earlier on in part one of this video that before this niger military coup leader went to his official visit in burkina faso burkina faso and mali they had sent a strong delegation in niger that delegations it was kind of like an invitation to the uh, military coup uh, government in Burkina Faso, I mean in Niger, telling them that no guys, we are open to work together as Africans because we can see that you guys you had also that same courage to chase France out of your country. Since that you managed to chase France out of your country, you managed to chase the US out of your country. Why not coming and join us as your brothers, as your African brothers and sisters, so that we can build something strong? And that's what they did. You had the military coup leader in the Niger government saying that we are here to build and uh, to build this one strong alliance between these three nations so that we will fight Sahel movement. But what is this Sahel movement mean all about? This Sahel, they are terrorists. The terrorist military group, I mean terrorist groups that the West had put in place so that whenever they want to steal or loot or whenever one of their puppet government I mean uh, government or president try to disobey them they'll send these uh, sale uh, groups to go in and try to bring instability in these countries try to distract the government Try to make things hard for the government so that in the meantime when these all things are taking place, them they are busy enjoying, stealing and doing everything as much as they want. And that is how they managed to survive all this time. But Niger, Mali, Burkina Faso, they understand that no look, we can be partners. We can be in alliance to look after one another. Whatever you are facing, that concern all of us. If you are having some, someone threatening you, well, that threat will be considered for all of us. Mm -hmm. That is what they want to sign there. So, if they suppose, for example, maybe people of Niger, they were expecting to have some, uh, I would call this, ads coming from the European Union, whatever they call it, the people of Niger, I don't think they'll need it anymore because now Burkina Faso and Mali, I'm just mentioning all uh, those three countries, but it could be many African countries because what we saw happening recently in these three countries, it had revolted a lot of Africans. It had really opened a lot of African leaders to be more careful for them to do exactly what their people want because if they don't do so, well, they know what to expect. They know very well that people will come back for them and uh, they can even influence the mi militaries and militaries will come and take the power. And once the military take the powers, it's going to be very challenging for a civilian to take power anymore. Because right now, if you would go somewhere like in Burkina Faso and ask them to organize elections, I don't think uh, people on the streets, besides politicians of course, but the nations, the I mean, people who usually vote, I don't think they'll tell you that no, they are ready for that. Because they had realized that they, they have that one leader who was supposed to be there a long time ago, but unfortunately was hidden in the military uniform. And there, they are referring to someone such as Ibrahim Tawori. Because they can tell that this young man is full of talent, uh, talented, this young man is well focused, you want the well being of uh, people, uh, people of uh, Burkina Faso, and that makes them feel like okay, we can just stay here, we can stick here and be okay, we can focus here and just try to uh, rebuild our country instead of us bringing politicians who will come with a long speech telling us too much promises, uh, but at the end of the day, they don't realize anything. And that's why you see people from the, uh, Burkina Faso, they are, they are not really putting too much noise in order for uh, Ibrahim Tauri to leave the office because they can see that the young man is bringing a one plus. And 
this good example it has really motivates a lot of african countries everyone now they are understanding that no actually france us that we thought they have much influence on us they are not that strong if we put our power together if we have to speak one language i think these people will be out of africa with an immediate effect and that's why you see them they are celebrating and knowing that at least we can do things on our own now let us find out what can be the next move that france will take because as i said i don't see france surviving without the gold of mali without all the minerals from burkina faso without the uranium from niger because you guys you know very well that the uranium from niger never benefit people of niger this uranium is the one that help france to home up their school their houses during the winter season and the people of niger they don't benefit from this and what even make it more worse is when they have to come and impose the price that you have to sell this uranium or this gold to any other nations who want to buy it they're not letting you to make your own choice of whom you want to sell this mineral mm -mm. they are telling you that no if this country come you sell them at this price so they are like that do you know why because them they always want to be the middlemen they want to make sure that they're there to control each and every situation so that they can take this mineral at a very low cheap price and then they'll have to go and sell it to someone else at a very expensive uh, price that's how you see whenever there is a, a world class uh, maybe they are trying to say that okay number one number three on this one two three four you find them to always be on the top five on the top ten with the so-called minerals that they are not allowed to have they don't even have it in their countries so they usually do this kind of things and they like to enjoy it more but now that Burkina Faso they close their door they cut all the ties against France Mali did the same even chased them after Mali we are having Niger also remove them out from their country the fact that these people left with their embassy with their militaries it shows that there is no any uh, collaboration between these two countries there is no any relationship between them which means france can't come and just say that okay hey you people of niger you must do one two three four and then have to listen to him no so they, they they cut the friendship of these countries and they don't care at first because these kind of things at first they used to threaten them telling them that no look if you try to do one two things we'll put sanctions on you you're not going to be able to do one two uh, one two three things you're not going to do that you're not going to do that but if you realize that most of these african countries they are no more afraid of these sanctions which will come from the u.s which will come from anywhere around the world that is a good sign that shows that africa is now taking its own liberations into their own hands africa they have now understand that they are they are they are true liberator of their economy and that's what is happening because now burkina faso can have their own gold and sell it to whoever they feel like selling it around the world at, at the, uh, the, 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 the price of their choice because no one is there to come and tell them what they should do that is how things are supposed to be that is how africans were supposed to be doing things around imagine today we are talking about burkina faso niger mali tomorrow if we can we can add maybe uh togo or Benin, or maybe chad the next things we are maybe in central africa we add maybe zambia we add maybe zimbabwe 
and we go on so on and so on can you have an idea of how this western power they will be obviously they'll be powerless when it comes to africa fair because africans by then will be following each other's examples and whatsoever these people they will say it will not gonna affect africans anymore because by then we will all be in the same page having the same language perhaps with one currency having the same um ideas which whatsoever will be discussed in africa union is something that will be applied by every africans that it's how things are supposed to have, uh, to be that is how um africans are supposed to be thinking because imagine france now not having access to all these minerals it will drop their economy down whether they like it or not because their economy is strong based on africans africa give france each and everything that france have yes everything that france have today is all thanks to africa but since they are so arrogant full of ego they don't want to accept it that's the reason why you see some of them whenever even they come in africa they don't even want to apologize for wrongdoing that they have done in africa so we are not there the only things we have to do as africans is just to make sure that we take the control of our economy we take the control of our africa continent we raise up our economy we came up with a one currency we came up with one african uh, africa union's activities we came up with uh, this one african um official uh, language and then we'll be able to confuse the devil mm -hmm. we'll confuse the devil because by then they're not going to understand what to be our plans each and every activities that africans they have to meet someone discuss their affairs about concerning what is happening in africa we should not allow anyone coming from the europe unions or america or what what all those kind of visit they usually come like no they invited them no one should not participate in what africans have to discuss on their affairs because you you would believe that you had invited people from the europe union but then they'll end up sending you a spy someone who comes in just to listen to what you are saying so that they will report and that's why you see most of african plans before even they get to start doing it is already be out because someone had to go and speak out about what we are up to and that is something we're not gonna tolerate anymore because africa have changed africa now have a new generation who have understand that enough is enough we're not gonna let this happen af uh, again we're not gonna tolerate this kind of nonsense continuing to happen in africa africa have understand that whatsoever our grandfathers had fought for they fought it for good reasons because this is the same thing that um, we are here fighting for and that for it is for that reasons we need to repossess back each and everything that belongs to us guys thank you so much it was very important that we get to discuss this conversation with you today because uh, it's uh, it is all about africa we are trying to encourage all the good uh, things that is happening around africa so if you don't want to miss any of our videos and you want to catch up in our next videos just make sure that you subscribe to the channel and click that uh, ring button so that whenever we are live you get to see our videos but do me a favor before you leave make sure that you give us your thumbs up you see down there there's a that like button just give us your thumbs up we really do appreciate because we would love this message to reach even to more many people out there uh, who cares about africa who want to see africa uh, standing up and start developing so this is what we usually do here time to time above all continue to be yourself be good be kind have respect for everyone in order for you to be respected run out of the trouble because we still need you here respect the law so that to be at your peace may god bless you all i'll see you again very soon Ciao, ciao.